Okay, so if you've spent any time with the big language models today, you know, they do amazing things. They can code, write summaries, draft emails, just brilliant tools. But um, they have this one really frustrating problem, their memory. It's just not stable. You can spend ages training a model, maybe get it perfect on physics, right? But then you try to fine tune it on something new, something specific, like, I don't know, optimizing some internal tech. And suddenly, boom, it forgets basic math it knew before. Yeah, that problem is, it's incredibly frustrating for developers. And it actually has a technical name. No. Catastrophic forgetting. And it's not just some minor bug, you know. It points to a deeper limitation in how these models are built. When you try to add new information, the system basically overwrites the older solid knowledge. Yeah. The model kind of loses what it was good at while trying to learn the new thing. Right. So let's get into the solution Google Research is putting forward. Because it sounds like they're not just trying to patch things up. They're talking about a whole new way of thinking called nested learning. Looking at their paper, they actually frame it as giving the LLM something like neuroplasticity. It really is a fundamental shift in architecture, yeah. The big goal here is to build AI that can learn continuously what they call continual learning AI. Systems that, you know, stay accurate on what they already know while adapting to new stuff constantly. And the really surprising part of this nested learning idea, it merges two things we normally keep totally separate the model structure, like its layers, and the algorithm used to train it, the optimizer. They've kind of built this, well, a core for a self-improving AI. So our analysis today will dig into how they engineered that stability. Okay, let's start with the pain points. We get the idea of forgetting, but why does it actually happen at a practical level, like in these huge transformer models we use? The research gives some really concrete examples of this clash. You mentioned one, fine-tuning on legal documents makes the model worse at coding, right? Another common one is, when you try to make the model handle longer text, increase its context window. What often happens is it gets worse at quick, short reasoning tasks. It's like it forgets how to sprint because it learned to run a marathon. Huh. That feels weird. Why would making it handle more information make it worse at something else? Well, according to this nested learning theory, the root issue is that standard systems draw this really rigid line. You've got the network itself the weight storing the knowledge over here, and then you've got this separate thing, the optimizer algorithm over there, telling the weights how to change. When new data comes in, that optimizer just applies its fixed rules, pushing changes across the whole network. The old knowledge, the stuff you want to keep stable, it just has no defense mechanism. Huh. So the key is to stop treating the knowledge and the update process like they're separate things fighting each other? Exactly. Nested learning basically dissolves that separation. Every single part of the model, every layer, every little update rule is seen as an active learning piece. Each piece has its own little memory, and this is crucial, its own update speed, its own cadence. That sounds complex. A lot of nesting going on. Can we simplify that? Like, what's the core picture for the listener? Yeah, let's try. Think of nested learning like this. The model is a system of interconnected optimization problems, but they run at different speeds, on different clocks. You have parts that change really fast, adapting instantly to what's happening right now. And then you have slower parts whose main job is just to consolidate the important, long-lasting knowledge for the future. The whole model becomes this layered memory system, managing that balance between changing and staying stable. Okay, and this is where that brain analogy, the neuroplasticity thing, maybe actually fits for once. It's often overused in AI. It really does feel more appropriate here. Mm -hmm. Our brains work on multiple timescales, right? Synapses change super fast when we learn a word, but the big structural memories, they stabilize much more slowly, like during sleep. Nested learning tries to mimic this. It gives different clocks to different modules really volatile part might update every single processing step, but a layer holding, say, fundamental grammar rules, maybe that only updates once every 50,000 steps. The trick is figuring out the right speed for the knowledge you need to protect at each level. Right. Okay. So moving from the concept to the engineering, this perspective must completely change what an optimizer is fundamentally. This is the really clever bit. Yeah. We're basically optimizing the optimizer itself. From this nested learning view, an algorithm like Adam isn't just a fixed set of math rules. It's actually acting like a memory system, compressing the history of how the model learned. Things like attention mechanisms, backpropagation, they're all fundamentally about memory too. The big innovation here is swapping out that simple fixed optimizer rule for something they call a deep optimizer. A deep optimizer. Sounds like it could be huge. 
computationally speaking, maybe even unstable. Actually, no, it's designed to be pretty small and efficient. It's usually just a little multi-layer perceptron, an MLP. Instead of just blindly following update rules, this tiny MLP looks at something very specific, a local surprise signal. That's basically the difference between what the model predicted and what it should have predicted. Based on that surprise, the deep optimizer learns the best update to make. So we're moving from fixed rules to learned rules, giving the update process itself some intelligence and memory capacity. Wait, let me see if I've got this. The deep optimizer figures out how to update intelligently. And the next piece, this continuum memory system that decides where the update goes and how often. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Transformers already have a basic short-term memory, the attention window and long-term memory in their pre-trained weights. Nested learning builds out the levels in between to create a whole hierarchy. Based on the research, it really breaks down into three main levels, managing how long information sticks around and how fast things change. First up is the fast level, or the volatile level. This updates constantly, like every single step. It's focused on the immediate context, local patterns, writing style, things just mentioned. It's designed for maximum flexibility. Imagine a small part of the model, maybe an MLP head. That's always changing. Then there's the medium level. This updates less often, say every N steps, maybe every 64 or 128 steps. It tracks things over a session, like user habits, the structure of a task, how tools are being used. This memory lasts for hours or maybe days. It does this by gathering up those little surprise signals from the fast level to form slightly more stable patterns. And finally, the slow level, the consolidated level. This updates really infrequently, maybe every few thousand steps or even less often. Its job is to hold on to the core skills, the fundamental knowledge that needs to last for weeks or months. It uses a special consolidation block that only writes very carefully chosen distilled improvements back to the main model weights. This structure is key to stability. The core knowledge is shielded from all the rapid daily changes. And Google built a proof of concept model for this, right? Called Hope Hybrid Optimized something. Hybrid Optimized Recurrent Architecture, yeah. Hope, it's built to show these principles in action. And maybe the most interesting thing about Hope is how it handles updates. It's genuinely self-referential. Self-referential, what does that mean in practice? It means part of Hope's core is actually a learned module whose job is to figure out how its own internal state should change. It looks at that local surprise signal and proposes its own update. So it's like a tiny learned optimizer running right inside the main model, actively guiding how it changes. Hmm, self-referential updates. Sounds like it could get chaotic. Couldn't the model just forget its own update rule? That's the cleverness of the routing. HAPE lets you precisely control where the change happens, manage the plasticity budget, as they call it. Most of the immediate churn, the noise from new data, gets routed straight to those fast, flexible levels, the slow, really important core parts. They only change if there's strong, consistent evidence over time that says they should. This protects the skills you've already trained, so you can learn the new thing without the old foundation crumbling. You get to decide exactly where the model is allowed to be flexible. Okay, so when we hear self-modifying AI in this context, we shouldn't imagine like sentient AI rewriting its code. It's more controlled. Exactly. It's engineered control. The model is applying a learned transformation, but only to specific parts of itself, its hidden states, its update vectors. The big win here is you have this small, efficient computational piece deciding how much, how often, and where to make adjustments. That learned decider is the key difference between blindly absorbing everything and intelligently filtering updates. Sounds good, theoretically. But did it actually work? For the engineers listening, did the benchmarks show improvement on tasks where models usually suffer from this forgetting? Yeah, the results look pretty promising. They're not claiming they've completely solved it for every giant LLM out there, but they showed significant gains across different types of tasks. For standard language modeling, hope was more efficient. It achieved lower perplexity, which suggests it learns better from the data compared to similar baseline models. And importantly, on common sense reasoning tests, it showed higher average accuracy. That hints that the multi-speed system is actually better at picking up those durable general rules instead of just memorizing temporary patterns. Plus, in those really tough, long context, needle in a haystack tests, the memory system did a better job keeping important details accessible, even when processing tons of information. Okay, practical question time. Scalability. If the model is learning at all these different speeds, doesn't that just blow up the memory requirements? The VRAM cost? That's always the worry, <laughs> right? But the research suggests the main complexity isn't storing massive histories of updates. It's more about scheduling, figuring out which bits update when. 
They say the memory overhead is manageable. It mainly involves things like counters and these small deep optimizer heads, not, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of past gradient data. And the other big one, safety. Alignment. A self-modifying system sounds potentially harder to control. Well, any system that changes itself needs careful controls, definitely. But nested learning actually makes managing safety a bit more explicit. Because the system is broken down into these levels, you can specifically choose which levels are allowed to learn from live data online. You can limit how much they can change in one go, their step size. You can even set up gates, like updates only happen if the model's confidence is high or if a check against a safe data set passes. It gives you more knobs to turn for building safer self-improving AI, arguably more than just doing one big risky fine tuning. Right, so if someone listening is thinking, okay, I need this, but I can't just rip out my entire system, the paper actually gives some advice on starting smaller, like a staged approach. Yeah, exactly. The advice really focuses on shifting how you think about updates and starting with just a couple of different speeds. So first step, pick your cadences. Don't overcomplicate it initially, maybe just define three speeds. A fast one updating every step, a medium one every, say, 64 steps, and a slow one only updating every 4,000 steps or so. Yeah. And assign jobs to those speeds. And then actually making the optimizer into a memory, how does that work simply? That's step two. Wrap optimizers as memories. Instead of the standard fixed momentum rules, you replace parts of it with a small learned update component, like a tiny MLP. You can train this little MLP on a simple task, like predicting stable weight changes. The goal is just to teach it what sensible, stable updates look like, so it makes smarter adjustments than a fixed rule would. Third is route surprise signals. You need a way to decide which speed gets activated. You calculate that surprise, how far off the model's prediction was for each bit of data. Then use that surprise signal to control how much each memory level is allowed to change. Big surprise might nudge the fast level a lot, but only consistent long-term surprise gets to unlock changes in that protected slow level. And the last piece, the real safety net. Constrained slow writes. This is the ultimate control. You basically put a gate on updates to that slow core knowledge level. Maybe updates only go through if performance on a validation set doesn't drop or if they align with data from a trusted buffer. The core knowledge only changes when you're really sure it's a good verified improvement. It's really interesting. The whole focus seems to be shifting. We used to focus on packing as much knowledge as possible into these static frozen models. Now it feels like we're moving towards building systems that are more alive. Systems that can keep learning without losing track of who they are. That really captures the essence of it. It's the fundamental challenge of continual learning, and nested learning offers a practical engineering path towards it. So the research kind of challenges builders to just try it out small scale, maybe implement just a two-level update system, fast and slow, with a small learned update component for one specific feature that keeps suffering from forgetting. And it makes you think about a parallel in your own work or learning, right? If you could apply this nested learning idea to yourself, what's the core skill, the really durable thing you absolutely need to protect that goes in your slow consolidated memory? And then what's the fast changing stuff, new tools, team dynamics, current project details that you'd let the fast volatile level handle? Making sure you can adapt quickly, but keep that core foundation solid. That's the management challenge this whole architecture is trying to solve.